Today I'm going to give you my review of the Porter Cable 9-inch bandsaw. Is it worth it? Is it not? What can it do? What can't it do? And dealing with a bandsaw, your 9-inch is from blade to the throat back here. That's how wide you can put it. If you raise this all the way up, you're looking at about three and three quarters of an inch that you can get through there. So you can put a two by four on edge. It's really simple to put together. Really all you've got is the table. It comes with a blade installed. You do have a dust collection port in the back. Right here that does accept the eccentric reducer you've got a motor adjustment right here where you can tighten and loosen the motor you do not need to do anything with that back there to get it to work what you do need to do to get the table on is you'll need to install these two and this is basically loosen it up you can turn it Give you an angle, put it back to 90. Before you do anything, you lock it back down. And of course, you would want to check to make sure that that was square before you use it. Miter gauge, flimsy at best. And it will rock side to side, but not really twist. So it does come with a miter gauge. Why none of these bandsaw manufacturers can include any kind of fencing on a sub $500 bandsaw, I'll never understand, but it comes with no fence. You do have two parallel slots here that you can attach a fencing system to, but it does not come with one off the, out of the box. To change the blade, these two to me are backwards, but you turn them clockwise to open them. When you install the table, you've got a bolt right here that you would need to take out to remove the blade. There's a gap right here on this side where the blade can go in and out. You would loosen this wheel right here, loosen the wheel. This right here, if you can push down a little, it'll pop open pretty easy. If not, you can get a screwdriver in behind. There's one hole here and down under here, there is one pin that feeds into that hole. It can be a booger to get open the first time, maybe the second time. But again, if you can just reach in there and push down a little bit to get that pin to come through that hole, it'll be a whole lot easier. But with this lowered, this wheel lowered using this knob up here, your belt will just come off and around. Again, it feeds through the side over here. Put it back on, make sure it's in the center. With it unplugged, just rotate it, make sure it stays where you put it. And you can close this back up. Okay. And again, these to me are backwards. Counterclockwise to lock them in. And then for tracking... You've got this right here where you would loosen this, adjust it, tighten it back up. This again is for your throat or distance from the table to the, your bearings up here. So I got this quite a while ago and the primary reason I got it was I was using smaller stock that I didn't really want to use my jigsaw for. This worked great less than $200. I can set this up, 
make whatever cuts I was wanting to make. Be done with that piece, get another one, do the same thing. No clamping needed that I would have needed for the jigsaw. You can get real close in here with the blade only going down. You don't have to worry about kick, kickback. Probably the, the safest saw in that respect with the blade only going one direction down. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, I would not use this for resawing. One, you need a fencing system. But two, it's just, it's got the power it needs to cut and it will cut well. It'll do its job. But I, I would not feel comfortable trying to resaw on a, a bandsaw this small. Can it be done? Yes, it actually can. I've done it. But I don't do that anymore. Just, I, I, I find it a lot easier for me to, if I have to resaw, I'll do it on my table saw. I've never had to do anything that my table saw couldn't handle. So, is this a buy or not? If you were like me and trying to get out of the jigsaw, this is a good, cheap, available pretty much anywhere bandsaw. It's got an attempt at dust collection. Does it work? Yes, it does. Uh, you don't really have a, as much sawdust to worry about on this as you do the table saw or planer or anything like that. But it, it does suck it through. It helps to hook it up to dust collection. If you're planning on doing a whole lot more than basically more intense scroll saw work, for lack of a better term. I think the all of these benchtop bandsaws are actually kind of midway between a scroll saw and a, a floor bandsaw. They do a good job, but they don't have all the features like with a table saw. If you got a table saw without a fence, would it work? Yeah, you could use a cross cut sled the whole time. But having a fence is just kind of a basic. And that would definitely help on any bandsaw. Other than that, if you're looking for something entry level, cheap, a couple hundred bucks or so, this is a good bandsaw to get. Just know what you're getting and don't think you're going to be able to do all the resawing that you want that you would normally do on a, a bigger bandsaw. This just isn't one that Although it will do it, it's not one that's really designed to do that all the time. So for me, if I had it to do over again, yes, I would buy it again. It was cheap enough to warrant the purchase. And it, like I said, it got me away from my jigsaw. And that's what I was really concerned about. Uh, the smaller pieces you use, the more this will come in handy over a jigsaw. Um, if you're not needing the super detailed work of a scroll saw, needing maybe a little bit more clearance, this is definitely one to look at. And I know there are now more of the lower cost band saws. They all look about the same as far as you get start getting below $500, you lose your fence right off the bat. Most of them. Almost every tool I've got that ever came with a miter gauge, they work. Everyone will say, oh, it, it doesn't work. It's not worth anything because you can do this. Well, your wood is on the table anyway. Whether this goes side to side doesn't matter. What matters is, is it sturdy enough to push forward without twisting? That's where you get into trouble. And all of them are now. They're in the beginning, when they first started putting these miter gauges in there, yes, there was a lot of slop in the track between the miter gauge and the track. But now it's tight enough so that I don't really worry about it that much if I have to use it. I just know that I'm getting it as an add-on to whatever piece of equipment I'm getting. And it's not the type of thing that most manufacturers will put a lot of money into. They're concerned with the machine. They throw this in as a 
by the way, you get this too. But that's pretty much where I'll leave this. I like it. It served my needs. I haven't needed bigger for many things. If that changes, then I will definitely replace it or add to it probably since this is light. I can take it pretty much anywhere I need to. Um, and it does, it has done all the work that I've needed it to do, but for what I've done, there's no reason to replace it yet. So if you have questions, comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. It does help the channel out. Um, and that's where I'll leave this one until next time.